Hey, Don Copeland here, and I guess I'm old because I was told that I need to talk to you all about kind of like where the DTG marketplace has come and where we've evolved to here with the G4. It has uh, been around pretty much since the beginning of this back in 2005. So what we got now is the G4. I want to show you a couple things. First, let me get a print going just to show you a little bit about the difference where we come to. All right. You see that? That's one of the places we've come to. I literally just laid that shirt on there. And it was sucked down, smooth, easy to align if I need to adjust it, ready to print. Back in the early days, not even that early of days, right? We had this bad boy. Let me get this started here. We had this, which was a tuck lock platen, which you had to lay a shirt on, tuck all the sides into. And this isn't even ancient history. There's a lot of companies still using these. In fact, RM2 still use these, right? You go back a little more ancient history, and you actually had a platen like this and a frame that went around it or a hoop that went around it to, to held the shirt down. It's one of the big changes in the way that the printers load now, especially this vacuum platen that we have, patented, is unique to our machines. It's amazing. On top of the fact that it's holding the shirt down, making it easy to adjust, it's also helping draw ink deeper into the garment, which helps give you a better, better set, a better washability on it. In case you didn't notice, what I did is I literally just loaded the shirt and hit a button. The machine G4 now has memory in it. So I can send jobs over to the printer and bring them up and print them from in here at will. I can bring them over on a USB thumb drive or I can just direct send the files over straight from our Ethernet connection. Another big difference we have in the machines now the way we pre-treat has changed immensely back in the day. We used to pre-treat by hand with a Wagner spray, spray gun, and it was a hit or miss proposition. In the early days, when, it, when white ink first came out in 2006, probably a 40 to 50% or higher failure rate on getting exactly the right amount of pre-treat down on a shirt in order to get good and quality white prints like we're getting right here now. We almost look like we get too much white ink nowadays. It's amazing. Another thing that's changed in the printers is how fast the white ink sets up, which allows us to print faster because we have to print a white layer and then a color layer. If the white ink doesn't set fast enough, we're going to have a situation where we have the ink going on top, the coloring going on top, and not getting a good set. Another thing if you may have noticed, when we came out here, we printed it. As soon as it finished the white, it immediately drew the platen back inside and started printing the color layer. On earlier generations of printers, you would have a full finish of the page and then a full reload, which was very slow. This is much quicker on the turnaround. A shirt like this, no kidding, when we first started doing this, we first started printing with white ink back in 2006, a shirt like this would have taken 15 minutes to print. And it would have felt like you to put on a, a piece of Kevlar on top of your chest. The inks now are more flexible. We print the shirts much more quickly. Literally three to four shirts an hour like this would have been the kind of production you would have had back in the earlier days of, of DTG printing. Nowadays we can print, we actually just did a simulation of 12 shirts, my first time really running this machine in any significance, and we got those done in under 45 minutes. It looks like we're starting to come out here. Let's take a look at the print quality as well. Another thing that you'll, you'll find that is with the newer print technology that we're using, we print our color layer and our white layer at the same resolution, which means very, very rarely do you see any signs of a white peak around the edges because we're printing it at the same resolution. You get perfect alignment. Get a nice color display while you're over here if you want to take a shot of that. You can actually see the file that I'm printing. I can set this up to do multiple copies. So all I have to do is hit the load button and it'll print another copy at a time. It's quiet. It's hard to see, but if I were to open it up, I had to, can't do it now, but we'd have to def defeat one of the uh, sensors in here. But you'll see that it really does not do any additional movement than it has to. Finally, probably one of the biggest things in terms of productivity is we now, a print like this, which literally at one point was a three minute cure, is now 45 seconds. Even most of the current machines on the market for a 
for a dark shirt, you're looking anywhere from a minute and a half to two minutes. 45 second cure times means in a lot of cases, our customers are being able to use one heat press where they were used two in the past. Give it a couple seconds here. See, as you see, here's the pre-treatment machine we discussed. Throw it on, push a button, instantly cured. You don't have to worry about a sprayer. You don't have to worry about overspray. Get consistent metering. You don't have to worry about the human factor of a hand spray. DTG has come a long way in the last 16 years since it really became in the vogue. Here we go. Finishing up now. And one it's kind of hard to show you, uh, but it's absolutely a fact is we have some shirts we printed off of this machine that have been washed 35 times and they still look 90 plus percent of what they look like coming off the machine. That's certainly, certainly a change with the ink set that we've used. And we've actually worked with this to develop and help develop this ink for the better part of the last eight to 10 years. Washability is amazing. The color is amazing. If anybody has been around DTG for a while, that is ridiculous white. It almost looks like white vinyl. So there you kind of have it. Real quick recap. Where have we come in DTG when we're here at the G4? Vacuum platen. Different sizes, by the way. We have different size platens for this. Gives it, makes it easier to position. Don't have to worry about anything coming off and on of the machine. Gives you easy position. Plus the fans go into a little bit lower mode when it's loaded in which is going to give you better ink penetration as well. It automatically sets its height that it goes in. So we don't have to worry about us adjusting it up front. Early days, crazy early days, we adjusted with a screw, scissor lift, and a bar. The machine then migrated to having lasers, right? Now the machines actually have, this machine has the ability to go in, it will raise itself up until it hits the laser, and then it will set the height as it goes in. Huge advantage. The, the operator who knows minimal about this but knows how to position a shirt can knock out shirts first thing when you get the machine. Literally, earlier today, I had not printed with this machine since it came in. I printed a shirt last night, three test shirts today, and then I knocked out a production run of 12 shirts. Your operators can do the same thing in very, very short order. There you are, the evolution of the DTG printers.